All right, so I thought I'd just take a brief moment to, to remind you or possibly teach you um, about the basics of Fourier transforms. I, I do this because this is gonna come up um, pretty extensively in the next couple of minutes. You don't need to know everything there is to know about Fourier transforms, to be honest, um, but you just need to know a couple of basic ideas. Um, so let's start with what is a Fourier transform? Okay. A Fourier transform is just basically a, a linear operation, which is a fancy way of saying I'm going to do something um, to a function of time, right? Or, or a function of one variable, right? So I'm going to have this function of my function, which is let's call it y of t. And let me get my laser pointer. So I've got some function of my function, and that turns my function into some other function. Um, and there's a specific way that you do that according to what a Fourier transform is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my function, which is y of time, so it's some function of time, and then I'm going to integrate it in a weird way. I'm going to integrate it over e to the minus i something something times a frequency, so f times uh, t, and I'm going to integrate that over all time. And so if I think about what this integral is, I'm taking a function of time and I'm integrating it over um, a function, but I'm integrating it over time. And so I'm going to integrate out time. Time's not going to appear after I'm done doing this integral. Um, but I introduced this other variable that was sitting in this exponential up here, f. And that means that after I'm done doing this integral, there, like whatever comes out of here will be some function of f. Um, and so that's what you find. So I'll, I'll just label it capital Y. Um, capital Y, which is a function of F, um, is referred to as the Fourier transform of Y. So um, the Fourier transform of little y gives you big Y. It's just all I'm doing is I'm converting a function of time to some different function of F. Why would I want to do that? Um, well, let me tell you about all the good properties. Um, so there's a one-to-one -one correspondent. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm using K here. I don't know if I can draw over that or not. Let me get my pen out. This is a typo. Boop, boop, boop. So I'm, there's a correspondence between functions of my little f and the input function, which would have been a function of time, the way that I had written it up here. Um, and so I can go back and forth, right? So if, if I happen to know what capital Y of F was, um, I could use the definition of the inverse Fourier transform to calculate Y of T. So knowing these, knowing capital, like knowing the Fourier transform is equivalent to knowing the original function because there's a way to go back and forth between the two of those things. And so if it's more convenient to work with the Fourier transform, then I might as well do that because I can go back later to the original function if I want to. Um, so it turns out that you know Fourier transforms, because they're based on integrals, are linear. So if I have if I take the Fourier transforms of two things added to one another, then I can also say that the Fourier transform of that thing is just the Fourier transform of the two things added to one another. So it's it has it's a linear function. Um, as a side note, both functions are defined over infinite extent. And so Fourier transforms are only defined when you can actually take this integral from, zero, uh, from negative infinity to infinity. So you have to be working with things where time is defined over an infinite length. Um, in fact, if you look at this carefully, this is the only thing that distinguishes it from a what's called a Laplace transform. Um, and the... Um, I, the complementary part of that is that the frequency f, um, or the, the Fourier transform variable f, also has to be defined um, from negative infinity to infinity so that I can take the inverse Fourier transform. Um, if I, so that some of those, so those things are true. The key thing that makes people want to work with Fourier transform, well, there's two things, but this is the main thing that we're, we're going to care about. Um, it turns out that Fourier transforms massively simplify convolutions. So these convolution type integrals come up a lot um, in the time domain, because basically what they say is that I have some response, but, but I have a lot of inputs that are happening at different times. And so if I want to know the total response, I have to integrate over what's happening at all the different times. 
That's basically what a convolution is, and they show up all the time. Um, in, in fact, they're going to show up in our experiment, right? Because the temperature profile you see on the surface is basically the sum of all of the thing, like the responses of what happened at, to inputs that happened at all these different times. And so, um, you know, we're going to end up with a bunch of convolutions in the time domain um, that are going to describe our current surface temperature. And, you know, it'll turn out to be much easier to actually work with Fourier transforms because it turns out that the Fourier transform of a convolution really just corresponds to multiplication of the two functions that were involved in the convolution. So this is a convenient um, thing. This, by, this property, is, by the way, is also true for, 48, uh, for Laplace transforms, if you're more familiar with those. Um, and finally, and this is convenient, and we'll use this a couple of times, is that there are lookup tables for how you, you know, so this, this integral up here looks kind of intimidating, but it turns out that mathematicians have worked out what a lot of these Fourier transforms are for common functions. And so we'll just go to look it up tables to figure out how to actually do these Fourier transforms on the functions that we care about. And I believe those are essentially all the properties that we need. Um, there is one other property that's not on here because we're not going to use it, which is that it turns out that derivatives um, in the time domain are much easier to do in the, in the Fourier domain. So the Fourier transform of a derivative in real space turns out to just be multiplication um, of the transform variable times the function itself in the um, in the Fourier domain. So it turns out to be pretty easy. We're not going to use that property, so who cares?